Hey, so what is DevOps, right? So I'm gonna answer that in this video and I'm gonna take it from a perspective that you might be able to relate to, assuming that if you're watching this video, you've heard the term somewhere, DevOps, and it kind of sounds interesting to you, but you wanna get past like the theory and the political agenda and the, you know, the eight hour dissertations and the people trying to sell you stuff and just figure out like, what do you actually do for DevOps. So that's how I'm gonna tackle this. And I'm gonna do so using something that you can relate to. You might've heard of this company or use this product called Netflix. We're gonna talk about what is DevOps using the application Netflix as an example. Hey, what's going on, man? I am Will from DevOps for Developers. And in this video, we're talking about what is DevOps. So. You might've heard of Netflix, you might've used Netflix. Just like to be right up front, disclaimer, I don't work for Netflix, I have never worked for Netflix. So this may not be 100% technically accurate, but what I'm gonna tell you is actually how I would approach this problem if I did work at Netflix. And so um, it'll be accurate from a perspective of DevOps, but it may not be the exact way that Netflix handles it. All right, so that said and out of the way, so let's think about what Netflix is, right? You're scrolling through Netflix, find something that you want to watch, a show or um, a movie. You click on it and it streams through to your device. And stream is just really, let's think of it as just like a download because that's all it is. You know, at a high level, the only difference between a stream and a download is a stream will start opening the file before the download is complete, right? So from Netflix's perspective, that's a really simple problem to solve, right? There's an application you're looking at. It has some links on it. Those links represent files. You click on one, it downloads to your device. So straightforward, right? Well, yeah, it actually is straightforward from that perspective. But now let's think about the scale of Netflix, right? So let's imagine that they make a change to their application. It, could be something simple. They change the font that they use for displaying the descriptions of the programs, right? So now that code change has to go out onto Netflix's servers. And when I say Netflix's servers, I mean, there's like tens of thousands of these servers. And that's where we start getting into DevOps, all right? Because it's not likely, it's not scalable, it's not even realistic to think that as a developer working for Netflix, that you're gonna log in to each one of those 10,000 servers and copy your code changes out to it. So we have to automate that. And that automated process is like the entry point or the gateway into doing DevOps. So let's talk about how that works a little bit. So we know how to write code, so we can actually write code that pushes our code out to all of those servers. Okay, and that's kind of what we're gonna do here, but we can expand on that a little bit too. For example, um, when we deploy that code out and we restart that server, we wanna make sure that it worked okay and that it came up and it didn't crash. So if we make it through like 9,999 of these servers and the last one fails on the installation, we've got a decision to make now because we can't have different versions of the code running on different servers. That would be insane to try and track who was doing what. And imagine it from a user perspective, you're scrolling through Netflix and you click on a movie and you look at it and you're like, no, nah, that's not the one I want. So you go back and then you hit that one server that's running a different version of the code. And now all of a sudden your Netflix application looks completely different. You're gonna be like, what the hell was that? So for that reason, we're gonna actually deploy this code out and test and make sure that it works right. And then if it doesn't work right, we've got a couple of options there. We can either roll back that change on everyone that we've already deployed it to, or we can pull that particular server out of service so that no one can hit it. So there are some other DevOps things that we need to be concerned with when we're dealing with this type of scale. For example, the logs, you know, each server is processing requests and doing its certain things. And we need to get those logs off of all 10,000 of those servers 
to one central location so that we can look and look at and analyze those logs. Particularly if there's a problem, we can search for um, you know, particular errors and see which servers those hit. And that will help us determine different things like, is this happening to all servers or have we got one server that's just misbehaving, things like that. Speaking of one server misbehaving, that's another DevOps tool or trick that we will implement. We'll actually build out health checks for all of these servers. Sort of, we'll actually build out a single health check that tests all of those servers and that server has to respond properly to the health check. And if it doesn't, we're gonna pull that server from service so that no one can hit it. And then we're also gonna build a brand new server to replace that one so that we maintain our 10,000 servers out there. We're also gonna build out some monitoring on these servers and kind of keep an eye on the performance metrics, you know, like CPU, memory utilization, um, network throughput, different things like that that'll tell us how heavy or how hard these servers are working because a company like Netflix has periods of peak activity and periods of off-peak activity. For example, during the evening, there's a lot of people who are home using Netflix, so the demand on the Netflix servers is much larger at evening than it might be at other times during the day. So using this monitoring, allows us to detect whenever the load starts getting heavy or the servers start working harder. And we can use our DevOps tools to actually build provision and deploy new servers or additional servers beyond our baseline of 10,000 servers and have those available to start taking that load so we don't overload all of the servers, which ultimately would lead to them crashing. And now since we're already doing our monitoring, we can also detect when that load goes back down at the end of the evening, and we can start pulling some of those servers from service so that we're not using or paying for servers that aren't really needed at the moment. Now, some of the other components of DevOps that are available is so far in our example here, we've only been talking about someone like yourself scrolling through Netflix, clicking on a movie, and then watching it on your phone, your laptop, your TV, or whatever. But there's a whole lot of other stuff that goes on in there as well. For example, you had to log on to the Netflix application. So there's a service somewhere that validates your username and password. And then you also clicked on your profile icon. So there's a profile service somewhere that knows the list of profiles for your application. And beyond that, for each profile in your Netflix account, they've tracked what movies you want, what shows you've watched, what your ratings were. And they use that combined with a recommendation service to find other titles that you would be interested in. So when you open up Netflix, you've got a full screen of things that they're pretty sure you would be interested in watching. And now all of those are subject to the same um, monitoring and deployment considerations that we talked about in the initial application. And in addition to that, like every developer at Netflix, regardless of which of those applications they're responsible for working on, they have expectations that the other applications around them are there and available. So for example, if I'm the developer building the browse feature in the Netflix application, I know that there's an authentication service that allows me to validate who that user is. I know there's a recommendation service that's gonna give me a list of titles this user is interested in. There's uh, you know, the billing service so that this person can update their billing details or we can verify that they have a current account before we start showing them stuff. All these different services come together and so one of the things that you do in DevOps is you build out that exact architecture and you kind of standardize on these things so that everyone on every team knows, they know what the other services are. They may not know how they operate, but they do know how to call those services and they know what data they're supposed to provide to that service and they know what type of response they're gonna get back. And so that's part of the whole DevOps ecosystem is helping to define, document, and educate everyone on that process. So that's like at a really, really high level, that's kind of what you do at DevOps or in DevOps. 
And there's obviously a lot of skills that are required there. So to work in DevOps, you don't have to have all of those skills. You can start doing DevOps by identifying one part of that puzzle that you have skills for or that you would like to build skills for. And then you work with the rest of the members of your team to provide that whole DevOps thing. You know, DevOps is not something that any one person is going to do. It's a combination of skills from everyone on your team working towards a desired goal. If you found that useful and you would like to learn more about DevOps, I've got um, a couple of playlists that I will link both here on screen and put them in the description down below. This shows you like some different real world examples of things that I do um, from a DevOps pers perspective. Easy for me to say, right? Um, some of those playlists will have videos that show you what I do, the DevOps things that I do uh, throughout my day. And then some of the others talk about different DevOps concepts and DevOps, DevOps skills that you can work on building yourself so that you can pursue either a career in DevOps exclusively, or you can add DevOps skills to your existing skill set just to make yourself a more valuable, productive team member in whatever role you happen to have. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll see y'all in the next video. So what are we doing? Shit. You would think I would have this figured out by now. All right, for real, serious this time. We're also gonna do some, uh, uh, right? Easy for me to say. We're also gonna do some, Mont God almighty, do you even speak English, dude? All right, here we go team member in whatever role you happen to have. Um, oh yeah, the ending. <laughs>